Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another quick pick prediction video. In this video, I'll be predicting the boxing bout between Jake Paul versus Nate Diaz. And how I feel about this one right here is I'm going high confidence Jake Paul to beat Nate Diaz. I just feel like a lot of variables aren't there for Nate Diaz. And I feel like all the really all of the advantages go to Jake Paul. So this fight is at 185. I think that's like cruiserweight, whatever case, but in MMA, that'd be middleweight. So Nate Diaz is pushing 40. Jake Paul is not even in his 30s yet. Jake Paul has been, you know, focusing on boxing for like five years, even putting his YouTube on the back burner. You know, he's kind of come back to it now a little bit, but he definitely had put it on the back burner for a long time. Not He used to be posting every single day. He, you know, went, put it on the back burner, and he's been focused on that. He's a younger guy. It's not like he was some guy that didn't come from no athletic background. He was like some computer nerd. You know, he was a pretty athletic guy. Not to say no phenomenal athlete, but he was athletic. Decent frame, decent build, decent genetics and whatnot. So then on top of that, to be able to have all these multi-millions and be able to purely focus on things, unlike, you know, a lot of other fighters don't get the opportunity to do. Like, you come in, you eating banana pills and oranges and stuff and leftover raw chicken and whatnot chicken breast and day old, like with um several day old bread and stuff just to go to some local gym or you know some local hole in the wall or get any way you could get it versus jake paul he could bring in people that could train him he could bring in any type of little technology he want he could bring in as many coaches as he want he could train like 100 people to to you know just jump in and out of the ring for him him any time of the day so he, he got way more access than a lot of these other guys so you can't just act him like he did some kid that just started you know from nothing and trying to come over or some nerd who started from nothing to come over he got a guy that's coming here you know with all all the v bucks and he could um hack his character out that's what i'm saying but yeah so and he's underrated boxer. he's definitely the better boxer of his brother and definitely probably the matter of fact not even probably he's definitely the best youtuber box that transition from youtube that's what i'll say but yeah he's going to with uh pushing 40 nate diaz who's uh lightweight to be honest you know by no means will he ever be a truer anything than a lightweight he won't be a true welterweight won't be a good welterweight won't be definitely won't be a good middleweight definitely won't be a good lightweight that's won't be a good heavyweight the best thing he that was a lightweight that's true weight class he can't put on muscle he's extremely weak chinny but you know in mma he can butt scoot he can't butt scoot in pull guard in boxing he's going with a bit much larger like bigger naturally bigger man Who's younger, faster, hits harder, and um, Nate Diaz doesn't typically hit hard. Like he typically is a volume puncher, and that's even in MMA. So with small gloves, so imagine with big gloves, he's gonna have less power. And um, yeah, going to big guys. I think um, Jake Paul's gonna be able to just really bully him out there. I feel like Nate Diaz gonna have a little moments where he flurry, but mostly Jake Paul probably gonna cover up with those big gloves. And also in MMA, without the smaller gloves, the slapping and all the stuff style that the Diaz brothers have, like you could play with the smaller gloves like you can sneak punches here sneak punches there volume here rip to the body you know touch things with less power and need to sit on things and just really just you know slip your hands in different places now you got bigger gloves um jake paul could sit on the ropes catch them duck under get in there and push them off first like it may you could slip stuff through there then when they try to duck under and you know maybe create a clinch situation or look to spin off the uh, ropes or spin off the cage you could hit them with knees you could put them in like a front headlock Threading guillotines, high elbow guillotines, jump guillotines, jump like jump into the guillotine, pull guard with the guillotine. You could like do a lot of different things. Or put them in a the guillotine, need them, need them in the body, need them in the face, and then try to wrench it and choke them out. But that, a lot of these different things that it, you know DS could probably use in a box, you know, MMA setting aren't there. And then in a, in a boxing setting, a lot of the openings that he had in MMA are even bigger because these guys are you know how to box. And also he's not dealing with little shorter lightweights like little five, seven, five, six dudes trying to reach him all time versus a guy that can hit you at the same place you can hit him from and can hit you harder. So ultimately, like, let me say, I just feel, you know, the myth, eliminate the myth of the Diaz brother having these phenomenal chins. They get dropped all the time. But again, they'd be able to bust school to recover. In Boston, they won't be able to bust school to recover. And I'm thinking um, fifth round TKO for um, Jake Paul. I just think um, Diaz can get dropped like he typically does, but he won't have the same recovery, like, you know, same amount of time to recover, the same luxuries. And Jake Paul is not going to let him off the hook. And I think Jake Paul is definitely conditioned to be able to go these rounds. And, yeah, and also more experienced in boxing. Nate Diaz might have been boxing here and there, you know, doing MMA and boxing inside of an MMA ring and probably boxing, sparring and whatnot. But as far as professional boxing, Nate Diaz has zero experience professional boxing, where Jake Paul had, like, what, six fights professional boxing. And, you know, actually a decent, um, decent competition as well, given, you know, where he's at. And so was underrated boxer. And 
Tommy Fury is a guy that's been his whole career. I mean, he's a born in a boxing family, so he'd be some decent guys, all I'm saying. But yeah, Jake, to sum it up. Nate Diaz too small, shinny. I think Diaz is gonna be. I know not Diaz. I think Jake Paul's gonna be the setup a lot of ways. In the, the little offense that, um, or the little or a lot of it, uh, but insignificant offense of Nate Diaz ain't really gonna be significant. I just feel like Jake Paul gonna be able to, you know, cover up, duck under when Diaz is flurrying and get him to, to um, you know, spin off the spin off the ropes or get the ref to separate them, get back to the center, jab his body up heavily. You know, Diaz already got a weak body. He a naturally extremely weak dude. Jabbing the body, you know, having react and then bring those shots over the top, and then start dropping me too big, too fast, and you know, have too much weight on those punches and be at a hurt the extremely narrow and soft body of Nate Diaz that was going to be even softer trying to cover, you know, come up to 185. Jay Paul got to cut to 185. Nate Diaz got to eat to 185. So he'll get, get that little weak body beat up and get shots brought over the top, hurt. And uh, let me say this before I finish the prediction off. I would hope Nate Diaz would knock Jake Paul out, give him a lesson. But ultimately, it ain't about what I want. It's about reality. Jay Paul going to knock Nate Diaz out, and I'm saying fifth round. I think the knockdown is going to accumulate and Nate's known for getting, you know, scar tissue, known for getting flash knocked down. But this time again, he won't get that 40 seconds to butt scoot and recover. He's going to have to get right back up. He has eight seconds to stand up because really by nine, you're not standing or on the process of standing. They're going to count you out. They're like, oh, wave it off. He's on his back looking at the ceiling at, at eight, wave it off. Or at nine, wave it off. So he got eight seconds to get to, you know, basically a standing position. And by nine, he got to have his gloves up so the, the ref could check, like, oh, you good? So if he's not there, he really got like eight, seven seconds to get up. And he might do that multiple times because he's going to get set down multiple times. And eventually, he's not going to get up at the speed or going to be on shaky legs. It won't be able to lean on no ropes or, again, resort to guard, like guard pulling. The ref's not, this is not MMA, and they're going to wave the fight off. So, yeah. Jake Paul's the younger, better boxer, and the bigger boxer as well. So, in this one, I got Jake Paul via fifth round TKO.